The last organ that we're going to discuss in terms of the female reproductive system is what's often referred to as an accessory sex organ, and that's going to be the mammary glands. Now, the mammary glands are associated with the breast. The breast is a collection of the subcutaneous tissue as well as the actual glands, mammary glands, and they're all going to be superficial to the pectoralis major. And if you remember that pectoralis, if you think of your pecs, that's your pectoralis major there. Now, the most superficial portion of the breast, you're going to have what's referred to as the nipple. These are going to be where the openings of those lactiferous ducts are going to be. So this is where the secretion or the ejection of the milk will actually occur. And surrounding the nipple is going to be this darkened area of skin referred to as the areola. The size of the areola is very dependent, is very variable, and it changes throughout life. So during uh, ovulation, it tends to get darker and larger, and then obviously during lactation it does as well. The areola has kind of a roughened appearance, and that's because uh, deep to the skin associated with the areola are going to be the sebaceous glands. And if you think about the discussion about the integumentary system, we know sebaceous glands are going to be oily in terms of what it produces, and this helps in terms of protecting the areolar region during lactation and during suckling that can uh, cause for roughening of that portion of the skin. Now, associated and kind of surrounding the lobules or the portions of the mammary gland is what's referred to as Cooper's ligaments or suspensory ligaments. And they're there just to help in terms of protection. If you did not have suspensory ligaments, that could cause for what's referred to as kind of the drooping of the breast. And that does occur with age or without protection if there's increased movement of the breast tissue like in terms of jogging or without support of the breast. So you can see in terms of the image here, associated throughout and kind of really attaching to the anterior portion of the breast back towards the pectoral fascia in this region here. Now the mammary glands are actually a modified sudoriferous gland. And remember back to the integumentary, we know sudoriferous means sweat glands, so this is a modified sweat gland that has a very distinct secretion, which is milk. And so function entirely in terms of lactation. This is well developed in lactating females, obviously, and not so much in males or unlactating females as well. So. Uh, you're going to have the release of specific hormones. You're going to have what's referred to as prolactin. And you'll talk about this more in terms of the endocrine system, but prolactin is going to be important in terms of milk production. And then in terms with suckling that can occur with the infant, you're going to have the release, and I always spell this wrong, so I'm going to make sure I do it right. This is going to be important in terms of the ejection of the milk, and it's going to go through in this particular way. So you'll have the production within the alveoli, which are just recesses. You're going to have the movement throughout these various systems, throughout the ducts, and you can see in this particular image, you're going to have these larger portions right here of the lobules that will get larger as they're filled with milk. They will travel through the ducts to the sinuses, which will be released around the nipple to the infant. This concludes our discussion of the female reproductive organs, including the accessory reproductive organs. Let's continue our discussion now in terms of the actual reproductive cycle, and then we will continue with the male reproductive organs.